What's up guys, thanks for coming to Game in Canada with me. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the Wii Virtual Console Injector Script to inject GameCube and Wii ISOs into Virtual Console games with GamePad support. Now this means you'll finally be able to store GameCube and Wii games on the same hard drive as your Wii U games. Now there's a lot of new options in the latest version of this script, but I'm going to do my best to run you guys through it, so get ready to ditch that second hard drive and let's get this started. Now if you remember the old Virtual Console Injector script, which was just some command line script, this updated one is a million times easier to use and has a great user interface. Also the previous versions, we had to do a bit of photoshopping to make everything look proper once it was on our Wii U, but now the script will even automatically fetch banners and icons created by the homebrew community. Over here on GBA Temp, this is Tech on Moon's release thread for the Wii Virtual Console Injector script. At long last, I have completed rewriting the Wii Virtual Console Injector from the ground up, far more features than the previous quote-unquote script. Now you can go ahead and download it through either the Mega Link or the Google Drive Link. I'm going to go ahead and open up the Google Drive Link. It automatically started downloading over here. You can see a nice little screenshot of the program here. If we scroll down a little bit more, you can see supported injection type, Wii Retail Game Injection, Wii Homebrew Injection, GameCube Injection, so either ISOs or GCM files, as well as it has multi-disc game support, which is pretty darn cool. Also, a virtual Wii NAND title launcher, so if you have something installed on your virtual Wii, you can launch it from a little shortcut on your Wii U's home menu. Now, that is a pretty darn cool feature. You can go ahead and read over this stuff if you want. I'm basically going to tell you about this part right here, the gamepad emulation mode. So extra modes are only applicable for Wii Retail or Virtual Wii NAND launcher titles. So as you can see, no gamepad emulation. You can use the Wii modes only. You can use the gamepad as a classic controller or as a vertical Wii mode, horizontal Wii mode as well as force the classic controller connected. Now there's a few games such as Resident Evil. I do believe that when you launch the game, the gamepad doesn't come up as a classic controller. So this is going to patch that and allow it to force the gamepad as the classic controller. There's also Force No Classic Controller, which is apparently very limited use cases, not too sure when you'd use that. And you can also swap the L and R with the ZL and ZR buttons, in case you're more used to pressing the triggers as opposed to the shoulder buttons. Now that I've gone over all that, make sure you download the injector script, and I'll meet you guys down in our downloads. I'm here in the downloads. I've got the zip file here. I'm going to go ahead and right click it and use 7-zip to extract it to here. Now this is going to give you a changelog.txt as well as an XE. I'm going to go ahead and delete the changelog as well as the zip folder. Now you can see to the left of the XE is The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Now this is a GameCube ISO and then these three games are all Wii games. Now just a note, these Wii games are WBFS, and as you can see, Super Mario Galaxy actually has two different WBFS files, so I'm going to show you how you can do one of these injections with two different files. Let's go ahead and open up the Wii Virtual Console Injector. Now here is the injector. As you can see at the top, you're going to pick what you're going to be injecting. All that we're going to be focusing on is the Wii Retail Injection and the GameCube Retail Injections. First off, go ahead and select your game by clicking on Game. I'm going to start off with Harvest Moon. I'm just going to click on the WBFS file and go ahead and hit open. Now as you can see it says icon and banner have not been specified. Now all we have to do is click download images and as you can see it went ahead and pulled some pre-made banners that the community has created and then Kacholix has gone ahead and put on his repo. Now we can go ahead and click on the next tab and this is optional source files. Now this doesn't really apply to too much but if you wanted a custom boot logo and custom boot sound and even a gamepad banner then you can go ahead and do all of that here. If there happens to be a second GameCube disc, this would be where you would insert the image. But let's go ahead and not mess with that right now. We can now go to the next tab, GamePad slash Meta Options. And this is where you can rename your game. And if it's got a long name, you can go ahead and use Line 2. Here is a pre-generated title ID. Now this is made to not conflict with any of your IDs that are already on your Wii U. So don't go ahead and change this. Just leave it as is. Now gamepad emulation, as you can see, this is only for Wii retail injections and virtual Wii NAND title launcher. So since we're doing a Wii virtual injection, we're definitely going to want some gamepad emulation. 
Real quick, I'm going to put this link in the description over on GBA Temp, and it's a list of the Wii games compatible with the Classic Controller. So if you know whether or not you want to try to emulate the Wii Wiimote with your gamepad or emulate the Classic Controller, this is where you're going to go. So if I scroll down here just a little bit, you can see here's Harvest Mood Tree of Tranquility, and it does support the Classic Controller. So when I go into the script, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I click on Classic Controller Emulation. The first choice would allow you to only use Wiimotes to play the Wii game. The second choice is likely the one that you're going to want and it's going to allow you to emulate the classic controller and use the gamepad. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one but you can see that there are other options here. Remember I said that some games such as Resident Evil or maybe even one of the Dragon Ball Z games do not recognize classic controller emulation so you have to go ahead and force classic controller connected. Now again, remember you can swap the L and R and the ZL and ZR buttons if you prefer to push the triggers over pushing the shoulder buttons. Down here is the mention of Resident Evil 4 of using the classic controller, but it has to be patched. So simply enough, I just click classic controller emulation and then onto the advanced tab. This is more for people that are encountering some issues or making their own Wii Virtual Console injections for homebrew. One thing you might need is this patch video mode with Wii VMC. Now if I go over to the page explaining everything, you can see here the advanced options and it says Wii Retail Injection Patches and that is patch video mode while using VMMC. Useful for PAL exclusive games that don't support NTSC video modes or vice versa. Again probably never going to need this but just be noted that it is there. Now all you have to do is go to the last tab, build title, and what you're going to need here is the Wii U common key. I'll show you how to get that in a second as well as Rhythm Heaven Fever USA title key and you can find it on that one title key website. Again I'll show you how to do that in a second. Head over to Google and type in Wii U common key paste bin and then hit enter and you're probably going to have to click the very first link. Go back to the Wii Virtual Console injector and paste in the common key. Go ahead and save the key so you don't have to find it again. Now go back over to Google and search for that Wii U title key site and click the first link. Once you're on the Wii U title key site, go ahead and search in the right search box for Rhythm Heaven Fever and you should see it pop up. Now just to the left of this game off screen is the title key, go ahead and copy it, but make sure you do not click the copy button as it will also copy the title ID. You're going to want to manually highlight it and copy it. Go back to the injector script and go ahead and paste in the title key. I'm going to go ahead and save it now so we don't have to find it again. Now when all four of these requirements down here are green, we are ready to build. So I'm going to go ahead and click build. You're going to need to choose a location. I'm just going to go ahead and pick my downloads. Now this might take a minute or so, so I'll check in with you guys in a second. If your Wii Virtual Console injector seems to freeze for a little bit, just go ahead and let it just keep running in the background and eventually you'll get a pop-up like this that says the conversion is complete. Now this is really important. You're going to install this with Whoop Installer GX2 like you do all things on the Wii U, but you're going to have to treat this like DLC where you're going to have to either launch Hacks Chi Custom Firmware or Mocha Custom Firmware before you load into Whoop Installer GX2. If you go down to the comments and tell me that that it told you something about SIG patches not being enabled and you didn't enter custom firmware, I'm gonna smack you upside the head, okay? Now click OK to continue. All right, up next, I'm gonna do another Wii game just to show you real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Super Mario Galaxy. Now I'm gonna download the images, thanks to whoever created these. I'm gonna go over to Gamepad Meta Options. Now this doesn't have classic controller support, so what I'm gonna need to do is either use no gamepad emulation for Wiimotes or try to use vertical Wiimote emulation on the gamepad. Honestly, I should probably use no gamepad emulation so I can use a Wiimote and a nunchuck, but I'm very curious to see how it works with the vertical Wiimote emulation, so I'm going to click it just because. But be noted, if you're normally using a Wiimote game, you should probably just put no gamepad emulation. Unless it's a horizontal Wiimote, then you can easily emulate that with the gamepad. Now, horizontal Wiimote would be sideways where you have the two buttons on the right and the D-pad on the left, much like an NES controller. Now I'm going to go over to build title again. Since we already have our saved keys, we don't have to enter those anymore. And I'm just going to click build. Super Mario Galaxy is now completed. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Before we get started, go ahead and insert your Wii U's SD card into your computer. Now at the top of the injector script, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to GameCube Retail Injection. Now I'm going to click on game. I'm going to select Twilight Princess. And I'm going to download the images from the repository. So here we go, I have the GameCube artwork for The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. 
Now optional source files, I don't have a second disc and I'm not too worried about a custom boot sound or anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over to gamepad slash meta options. Here's the title of the game. The gamepad emulation does not matter because the gamepad is gonna work automatically. Now you could go over to advanced. If you didn't wanna play in widescreen, you can force it to play in 4.3 if you wish, but you're probably never gonna to have to click that honestly. And you can also specify a custom Nintendo forwarder in case you happen to have your own already made, but don't worry about that for the moment. And if you don't want the game to auto boot into it, and instead you wanna to go to the Nintendo menu, you can disable auto boot, but you probably again, don't wanna do any of these things. So let's go over to build title. So now before we build the title, I want you to click on Nintendo SD card menu. Now this is gonna go ahead and pull up a little menu where you can select your SD card. So here's my Wii U's SD card. What I'm then gonna do is download the latest Nintendo from GitHub. So now it is downloading directly to my SD card and it's going to put it in the appropriate folder. Now if you already have Nintendo, this doesn't really matter, but you can go ahead and get the latest one anyway. So my download is complete. So something you might want to do is Wii U widescreen, force widescreen. Some people like to force progressive, but I'm also going to put on mem card emulation. The mem card blocks, you probably don't need to change. You can put in multi memory cards, but you don't need to do that either. You're probably fine with one. And then video mode, if there happens to be some flickering, you could force deflicker, but no big deal. Don't change anything in here. I'm gonna go ahead and generate Nintendo config file now. And now that is complete. I'm gonna exit out of the SD card menu. And all we have to do is go over to build title and click build. My GameCube game is now completed. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Now that all your games are done being converted into WUP installer files, you can open up your SD card again. Now here I am looking at the root. What you will need to do is open up your install folder. If you don't have an install folder, just go ahead and create one. And this is where you're gonna to wanna to put all of your injects. So I've got my three games right here, The Legend of Zelda, Super Mario Galaxy, and Harvest Moon. I decided not to do Donkey Kong Country just to save a little bit of time. So I'm just gonna drag these into the install folder on my Wii U's SD card. My games are now on my SD card inside the install folder. Now all we have to do is safely eject the SD card. I'm gonna reinsert it into my Wii U and power it on. I'll meet you guys down there. Down on the Wii U, I've gone ahead and launched the Homebrew Launcher. I am now gonna load into Mocha Custom Firmware. Now again, you could use HacksG Custom Firmware as well. Do not skip that step. Please, please do not skip that step. After entering custom firmware, I've gone ahead and launched the homebrew launcher again, and now I'm going to load Whoop Installer GX2. You could also launch it from a Hacks Chi shortcut. When you load into Whoop Installer GX2, go ahead and select all the games you want to install. You can select them simply by tapping on them with the stylus. Now go ahead and tap install. Tap yes, you do want to install the applications. Now Whoop Installer is going to ask you if you want to install to the NAND or the USB. You're definitely going to want to install to the USB. Now the reason you install these to USB is anything you install directly to the NAND with Whoop Installer either has the ability to fail and you can lose some NAND space that is kind of hard to recover or it can even brick your system. Allowing Whoop Installer GX2 to install the games to your USB and then using the actual Wii's data management, which you can access through system settings to move the games from USB over to the NAND if you so desire. After these finish installing, follow the prompts and I'll meet you guys back at the home menu. Okay guys, so we're back here on the Wii U home menu and as you can see, I've got some new games installed. Here is Super Mario Galaxy, there's Harvest Moon, and this is the GameCube game, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch the GameCube game first and see if it works. So let's load into it. It'll say this game supports the Wii U gamepad. Do you wanna use it? Yes, I do. And this is gonna allow you to use the gamepad as a GameCube controller. So it's got a cool little splash screen there. Shout out to whoever made that out in the community. After your Wii U flips into virtual console mode, you'll see Nintendo load up for a split second and then it's gonna go ahead and go right into your game. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on 60 Hertz. The reason it asked me that was because it is a European version of The Legend of Zelda. So as you can see, here is The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Now, as I said, this is the GameCube version. I have it stretched to widescreen. It is playing on the gamepad right now. It's kind of hard to see. My screen is really bright, but there we go, I've managed to show it on screen there. I'm gonna go ahead and see if the buttons are working, and they seemingly are. Yep, everything seems to be working fine. 
Remember, we emulated the memory card in the Nintendo settings, so when you launch a virtual console inject that is a GameCube game, then it's going to go ahead and allow you to use the memory card. So I can create a new log here, and I am Link. Now remember, there is a Wii version of this game if you wanted to play it with the Wiimote. I'm not too sure how well the gamepad would emulate the Wiimote doing a Wii Virtual Console injection of this, but it'd be interesting to try it out. I know a lot of people prefer the GameCube version of this game strictly because they can use a controller. So, you know, if you're looking to play this game with a controller, you can play it on your gamepad like a Game Boy. Pretty awesome. Let's go try out some of the Wii games. Pressing the home button on your gamepad is going to take you out of Nintendo and bring you right back to the Wii U menu. Quick note, when you exit out of a GameCube inject, it will take you back to the Wii U menu, but you will be out of custom firmware. So before you launch another inject, you're going to have to enter custom firmware. So I'm just going to load Hackschi while holding the A button, and that'll put me into Hackschi custom firmware. And then I'm going to go ahead and launch Harvest Moon and Super Mario Galaxy. So now that I'm back into custom firmware, let's go ahead and load into Harvest Moon. I'm going to hit A on it. Now this game does support the classic controller, so it's going to give me the prompt if I want to use the Wii U gamepad, and I'm going to say yes. And this is going to allow me to use the gamepad as a classic controller on this Wii game. Cool little boot screen. I'm actually pretty excited about this. So here we are. The game seems to be playing on the gamepad as well as the TV. Pretty awesome. I'm going to go ahead and hit some buttons and see if I can skip past this intro. Oh, the A button seemed to be responsive. Let's see if I press any button. There we go. So I can go ahead and start a new game if I want to. This is awesome. I got Harvest Moon for the Wii on my Wii U gamepad. Let's go. This is absolutely awesome. And it is emulating the classic controller perfectly. In case you're wondering if the Wii U Pro Controller works with Wii Game Injects, it does not. As you can see, it just flashes and it doesn't want to connect to the Wii U. So I am going to be using the gamepad strictly for Wii Injects. I'm going to try hitting the home button and seeing how Wii Injects exit. So, oh, it allows me to exit back to the Wii menu. And look at that, it actually took me back to the Wii U home menu instead of the virtual Wii menu. How awesome is that? So you can exit out of Wii Virtual Console injects. Now again, we're going to have to enter into Hackschi or Mocha Custom Firmware before we launch Super Mario Galaxy. So I'm going to do that real quick and then let's launch the last one and see if that Wii Mode emulation works at all on this gamepad. I'm back in Custom Firmware, let's launch up Super Mario Galaxy and check out our last Wii Virtual Console inject. It says it supports the gamepad, yes. So this is the gamepad going to be trying to emulate a vertical Wiimote. I don't know if that includes the nunchuck or not. I'm really hoping it does. It would be super funny if I could play this emulating with the gamepad as opposed to using a Wiimote. So as the game started, I just received the answer to my question. It's asking me to connect a nunchuck. So it senses my gamepad as a Wiimote but it doesn't sense the joystick as a nunchuck. That would be super cool if that could be implemented in the future, but we'll have to see what's up. So next time I inject Super Mario Galaxy, I'm gonna have to select no gamepad emulation and just use an actual Wiimote. If you ever need to delete any of these, you can go into data management and system settings and you can delete them right from there. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you're now running Wii and GameCube games off of the same hard drive as your Wii U games. If you have any questions or comments, go down to the comment section and let me know. If you happen to have a like in you and you wanted to give it to me, that would be awesome. And if you happen to want to subscribe to the channel and see some more awesome tutorials, you could do that as well. I'm not making you do it though. Do what you want. Also, if you haven't followed me on Twitter or joined our Discord, there will be links down in the description. If you wanted to donate to help us get a Switch, there will also be links down in the description. Shout out to Tech on Moon for making the awesome script, and much love. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.